Have you ever heard an unexpected voice call out to you? Can creatures follow you across state lines? Would you ever hunt a skinwalker? Today, we test the believability of Creature Feature, Volume 4. Welcome to Believing the Bazaar. Where we dive into the unknown and the unusual. And tell you whether or not we find it believable. Oh, yes. That is right. Happy Preacher Tuesday. Feature volume four. Yeah. You know, I had to make sure that it's been long enough because I don't want to I don't want to be pumping these. You out left every other me month. waiting. I'm excited. Do you know when the last one was? Do you have a guess? It was this year. March. Yes. Was it? Oh, it was really? March of 2024. So it's good. been six months. Okay. Just enough time. It's a good time. To rack up some creature, cryptid, creepy stories. Before we get into the episode, just want to thank our newest patrons. Now we're recording this a little bit early just because the way the week works. Normally it's a full week that we get a chance. So if you come in in, you know, like Wednesday of last week and you don't hear your name, it's because we're actually recording this on Tuesday. Like Texas UFO alien encounters just yeah, dropped today, today. today. Yeah, yeah. but anyway thank you for joining gomez brenna haley and brianne we appreciate you we appreciate you supporting the podcast yeah joining our patreon reminder you can expect new content every single wednesday and friday on What's patreon coming it's coming up next up this week you can expect remembering the bazaar which is where producer ben quizzes us on our own damn episodes yeah see how much we remember and play along it's see a lot how much of you fun. remember it's a lot of fun sometimes we win sometimes we we don't win and then this friday you can expect do you believe the bazaar which is a fun game where producer ben tells us three creepy paranormal stories and we have to guess which ones are real and which ones are fake so that is this wednesday this friday thank you again for joining Man, it is creature feature time. Number four. Yeah, something about Skinwalker in there? Something about Skinwalker in there. All right. I know some of y'all like, stop saying that word. It's like, <laughs> well, they're sending us stories and they say those words. I can't. You know, I don't, do you still get a little nervous right before we hit like record? Yes. I just I do. know. Sometimes I notice I like delay and procrastinate. It's like, what else can I say or what else can I physically do before yeah. we hit record? It's like, but like once you get into it, it doesn't matter. Like right now, I'm good. Yeah. It's that like pre, just like, eh. it's a little jittery. It, that's good to be like that, though. But I'm super excited for today's episode. The source for today's episode include Y apostrophe A L L. Also, just a note: I do go a little bit out of order in terms of submissions to fit this theme. So, if I say a year, right? Like, if I say this story was sent to us in tw- 2023, yeah, and you're like, "Well, I sent mine in 22." How come it's like I I had to pivot? I I like I went through a lot of stories. And earmarked the ones that were mm-hmm. cryptic creatures because a lot of them were hauntings. And that's cool. That's yeah. So, you know, don't don't fear that if you've submitted a story or an encounter, uh, you think we've we've passed you by like a small little spooky whisper fluttering in the wind. Your submission about a haunting is not buried. It's not or aliens or uh, Whatever. sleep paralysis. You know, it, it is safe. It is logged away. You are good. I promise. With that being said, we got four stories for you. Let's get into them. All right, our first story comes to us from Jordan in Utah. Takes place in 2018. Oh, this is in the past. Yeah, well, he didn't. Yeah, I don't know when he sent it to us, but it took place in 2018. Okay. So Jordan's from Utah. He chose to keep the exact location private, which is cool. It's a big state. I respect that. Keep it on the down low. And after hearing this experience, uh, let me tell you, I wouldn't want to visit. I'm so. excited. So Jordan was in his mid-20s in 2018 when he decided to buy a home. And I think we can both say that's pretty good timing. It is, for yeah. Jordan, Because the truly scary thing here is interest rates. So Jordan started working for a local school as a history teacher, and he moved away from his friends and his family, and he bought a small two-bedroom ranch in a pretty rural area. So you bought a small home. Small home. Just a teeny little as home. As a teacher. A little two-bedroom home. That's all he needs, because it was just him and his dog. Yeah. There was no significant other, no yeah. other family, so just... Smaller house in bottom. One bedroom for him, one bedroom for his dog. That's yeah. all you need. They, they sleep in different rooms. They, the dog snores. Everyone understands separation. Yeah. More than anything, Jordan loved how secluded and quiet the house was, especially because it was surrounded by woods and nature. He imagined himself sitting outside in the late summer and fall nights, 
sipping on a cold drink and listening to the birds and insects and just relaxing. I truly imagine desert in Utah. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Desert? I did, yeah. And you said Utah. I was like, oh, this is like definitely deserty. Well, like there's forest. also mountains. You're right. No, I, I was incorrect. I've never been to Utah. So, you know, the, I was actually thinking about that. Not on this listener submission. It was a previous one. I don't remember what my last listener submission was. But if somebody could be like saying the wildest, most incorrect shit, and you and I are just like, oh, the desert heat of Pennsylvania was <laughs> strikingly hot, and really? the, the dry heat of Ohio. You know, I think so, we would go with it. We know how to improv enough to yes and it. No, no, no. I mean, if we didn't know. Oh, Like, okay. if someone was telling us about, like, the political climate of Idaho. You know what I mean? Like, there's certain things where we're like, the mountain range that's only found in, you know, like... You know, we're not like, going to know. I would like, well, there's certain things we may fact check, but you know, we also take people's words. I was just thinking it's like, we could be saying the wildest shit. Well, that's why I like, cause I think people like to talk about themselves and that's why I like listener submissions so yeah. much because you get to learn about different places. Different Wikipedia people. doesn't go deep on these people. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I vibe with Jordan here. Like I love having a deck. Like that is, there's a couple features in my current house that I have that I really like. And one of them is the deck. Like we used to do Patreon stuff mm-hmm. out there. You get the lights, the pergola. I love the deck, so I get I get where he's going. He says this is a very different lifestyle than what he was used to in West Valley City, Utah, which big, I know Salt Lake City exists. Apparently, there's a West Valley City, too. Big bustle in West Valley Lake, Utah. I don't know. I don't know. So the first thing he did was literally deck out his deck. He became Home Depot's number one customer. <laughs> he bought nice deck furniture, fire pit, all the all the good stuff. Sure. All the good stuff. Maybe a little bar thing. I don't know. Uh, you know, Dick's Sporting Goods has like a um, fajita. What is that? Black top? Like, oh yeah, I want one of those. And just throwing that out there in the universe. So he ended up moving to this area of Utah in mid July. So he had about four or five weeks before school and teaching ramped up for him just to enjoy his home, explore the area, and chill out on his deck. However, he noticed within the first few weeks that something felt off. And here's a quote from Jordan: "Quote: I really wanted to enjoy my deck, but in the simplest terms, I just couldn't. Something was off." I'd be sitting in a chair and reading a book or listening to a podcast and I'd have this terrible feeling that I was being watched. And it wasn't like a neighbor had their eyes on me, which obviously they couldn't. The woods surrounded me. There was no neighbor. It was a vulnerable, exposed feeling. Like every movement I made was being carefully watched. I hated it and immediately ruined the backyard for me. Unquote. Mm. It almost feels like a movie. Does it? To me, it feels like a start of a, of a horror movie. Like when, the, when they got the boxes and they trip yes, over exactly, something. They'll be yeah. careful with that. And then the dog runs off the screen. They, the camera follows the dog. And then you mm-hmm. see the kids playing. And, and you see the eyes in the forest. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's Insidious. That's Oculus. I mean, it's there's more than that, too. Mm-hmm. The Poltergeist, maybe you start that way. I don't remember, to be honest, actually. Did they move in in that? I don't know. I just, I, no, I think so, because it's a new housing development, right? Night Swim. That was gross. I have not seen it that. Ter- it was, you don't, don't see it. It was terrible. <laughs> I mean, it is that trope. It's that moving in. Yeah, it's just scary though. But it, it's it just a, feels real too. It's an. It's a. It's like an. You're crossing a threshold. You know, it'd be very, very strange if you lived in a house for ten years, nothing bad happened, and then all of a sudden it was haunted. Yeah, for, for that reason, we look for like triggers, like who played with the Ouija board, right? So we don't know what, what's going on here. We just know that he's only been here for a short period of time. Mm-hmm. So eventually, for Jordan, school picked up. And he let himself fall into that lifestyle. He gave his students and their work all the attention that he wasn't giving to his dog, Roger, and found himself going to sleep early and leaving his home to go to activities like working out or the Friday night football games. The next moment that stands out to Jordan took place on an October evening. And here's a quote from Jordan. Quote, I went to bed early and was woken up by my dog, Roger, whining at the bottom of my bed. The last thing I wanted to do was get up. But as they say, when you got to go, you got to go. And I definitely didn't want to be cleaning up an accident the next morning. So I got Roger's leash and we proceeded to go outside in the backyard so he could take care of his business. Immediately after, Roger's head darted toward a particular section of the woods that surrounded my house. His hair stood up and he let out a very unusual growl. I say unusual because I've heard him growl at squirrels and cats and things like that. And this was way different. Naturally, I tried to calm him down. But as my eyes were adjusting to the darkness, I followed his gaze, and I saw it. Something was standing at the edge of the woods. It wasn't quite a full moon, but it's bright enough to see shapes and shadows, and this hunched-over thing looked massive. I tried to discern an exact shape or size, but a moment later, 
Roger let out a yelp, and this creature shifted, and I saw two piercing yellow eyes before it disappeared in the woods in a flash. Unquote. What are you thinking, Charlie? Thinking, I, I'm not sure what it could be. If it's it's big, I mean, maybe it does sound a little bit Bigfoot-ish, I guess. Mm-hmm. Or like Swamp Monster, but also like for some reason, I was thinking about like those those Finnish stories. About oh, okay. the, the rock monster, the rock monster, things like that. Yeah, like big bulking, mm-hmm. not quite rubbery like Grafton. No, no, yeah, that's that's what I was thinking about. But I, I I am curious to see where this goes. But I wonder, are there a lot of like Bigfoot sightings in Utah? Is this a common thing there? I don't think so. I mean, it's got it's got the Forset area. Well, it has mountains and stuff like that. I like it's not quite like Pacific Northwest. It's mm-hmm. Colorado, you know. It's like mm-hmm. I, I wonder. I know you'll get into it later, but what are you thinking? Well, we'll get into it. Later. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm curious. I guess we'll if, find if, out more about I'll the story this. too. If if this was the whole story and it was like it's over, what do you guys think? It would definitely feel Bigfootish to me. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the vibe I'm getting. It's like a creeping, creeping, lurking Bigfoot. Yeah, but that, but also like Bigfoot isn't known to hang out at one place for a long time. Like, this has been a feeling for a long time that he's being watched. Unless it's their woods and they have, like, uh, nests in the area. Because it doesn't say Jordan's explored the woods. Where they wood. put up a fence? Like, this is big no, foot private we, property? we talked about Ohio Grassman and the nests. I guess they do, like, stake a territory, right? Yeah, like, this could be, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know the, the day in and out life of a Bigfoot. A day, a day in the life of Bigfoot. I bet they make flower crowns. Flower crowns? Like, yeah. midsummer? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So something changed for Jordan after that night. He says that while he was reluctant for a few days to even approach the backyard and would take Roger to the front yard to do his business, eventually he decided maybe his eyes were just playing tricks on him and he couldn't live in the fear of his backyard forever. So before it got too chilly outside, he continued going back onto his deck, but just stayed aware and made sure that Roger was always with him too. But here's the weird thing. While he was mentally on high alert because of what he'd seen, the feeling seemed to be gone. He no longer felt like he was exposed. He no longer felt like he was being watched. And this made no sense to Jordan, especially after having witnessed something so creepy and strange. Like he thought it'd be ramped up, Mm. but instead it's like, mentally, I know I saw something or I think I saw something, but I'm not getting those weird vibes or feelings anymore on the deck. Mm Mm-hmm. So either way, he was happy to have some semblance of peace in his backyard and took advantage of it for the remainder of the fall. His last encounter took place a few months later around Christmas time, and this is wild. I, I normally don't pretense things, but this is... Oh, boy. This is... Um, oh, boy. I was just thinking, you know, you need to light up your backyard with lots of lights. I bet yeah, that would do it. Yeah, get some tiki torches. And <laughs> tiki, some, some fairy lights all around the back. That's fairy lights, the, the twinkle lights, get mm-hmm. a pergola. Mm-hmm. Spotlight. My neighbors have a big ass blue spotlight. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, but it's there. It's there. I think it's blue. It could be purple. So his last encounter takes place a few months later on Christmas time. And this was the first time his family like truly came out and s- to spend time at the house. Mm. It was just his mother and father. He, Jordan was an only child. So he often found himself going back to West Valley City to visit them rather than them more often going to visit him at his new house. But on this occasion, they came out, they had dinner, coffee, a good time, hanging out around Christmas. And with all the cookie in the kitchen, and apparently that winter time was unseasonably warm, they opened all the windows of the home, and they went to the living room to talk and hang out. And to Jordan's surprise, and what he assumes was part of like a, a parent, you just bought your new house, you're on your own, so let's revisit your childhood type of thing. Mm-hmm. They brought over a VHS player and some video, like home videos. Oh my gosh. <laughs> of Jordan oh my when he was gosh. younger, which I I know there's some of me from when Florida, I was four years old and m- my parents took me to Disney World in Florida. Oh, okay. So there's, yeah. I, I know like there's not much I remember, but I know there's a video of me when I'm four. So I don't know exactly what they showed him, but they're watching like the short shaky clips from a VH, you know, the, the mm-hmm. dad or the, mom the holding giant box. Yeah, the VHS recorder and they're laughing and they're having a good time. However, something unexplainable happened to Jordan the next night after they'd left. And here's a quote from Jordan. I was taking out the garbage out to my trash can at night when I heard a strange noise. At first, I thought I just, you know, ignored it and attributed it to an animal or something like that until my mind fully digested what it was. It was a voice. 
and it wasn't just a human voice, it sounded like my mom. I froze, one hand opening the can and the other hand holding the bag of trash. I could hear my breath in the stillness of the night, hoping to see if there was any evidence of this being real or maybe just me losing my mind. And then I heard it again. It was a very soft, hey. I dropped my garbage bag and walked over near the edge of the woods. And let me be honest, in the moment, I knew it wasn't my mom. Why would she be in the woods? It makes no sense. But I couldn't stop myself from walking over to see what the hell was going on. And then I heard something else, and I'll never forget it. Look at you walking, Jordan. You're getting so big. It was the same exact voice, inflection, and tone that my mom used on one of the VHS recordings that we watched the other day. But somehow it was coming from the woods. Trash be damned, I darted back to my house, locked every door, checked it twice, and checked every window. Roger was staring at me, rushing around the house, but he didn't seem bothered. I thought I was going to have a panic attack, and needless to say, I didn't get a wink of sleep that night. Unquote. That is so creepy. Uh, like, so creepy. That's the worst. And that's the end of his submission. No. He said that he hasn't experienced anything since, but he also said that he moved two years later in 2020 before the pandemic. That's a good thing. That's a good thing Dude, he did that. Like, unless it was like auditory hallucination. Like, because you know it was listening. Yeah, it has to be. It had to have been listening. Oh, oh, so that's terrible. Yeah, that is very oh, scary. Oh, God. Ooh, I shake that off. Shake it off. I don't know. I didn't like that. Like, it's... Ooh. What starts off as, like, a Bigfoot story, and then yeah. you get that, and it's well, just, you just like, like, wonder what could it be uh, then. Yeah. I mean, one way leads one one way, and then another way, yeah. 100%. Which we can talk about that in discussion. We'll come back to it. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Well, Ooh. Let, let's move on to our second story. All right, we got a Sophia story, which ah. for newer listeners, that means it is anonymous. Why is it Sophia? I don't know. We just picked it for an... Well, there was one, that was one of the very first anonymous ones. So we yeah, just, we just picked it. Wasn't it like, was it the hospital one? Like there was a collection of stories and it was like hospitals. Yeah. And somebody was, I feel like it was that. I don't remember what it was exactly, but the name, it, it became an synonymous with anonymous for I us. I feel like you, it was a listener submission collection and there was one that takes place at a hospital. It was like somebody who worked at a hospital ah. and it, or like a school, a school or a hospital. It might be the school. And it was very scary. And I feel like that, I, I could be very wrong. I think it was the school. I think I remember you talking about. But this does take place in Let's Go Buffalo, New ah. York. I see. With shout out Josh Allen, who's my fantasy QB. He was probably in this story. Probably. Um, also, Cowboy fans, I have no ill will. All the brown I gonna, sadness. I was going to wonder if you are going to bring it up. It's quite internal at this point. Yeah. Anyway. I cried in my shower. I'll read this in her words. Quote, it was early September, the beginning of my junior year of high school. For some context, it's a fairly common occurrence in my city for teenagers to go to one secluded part of a park on a Friday and get drunk. These parties are usually held throughout the summer and most of fall. So being freshly 16 and down to get pretty crunk, I grabbed a friend, let's just call them Jerry, and headed to the park one Friday night. Because it was our first time going, we weren't entirely sure when it usually started, so we showed up a little bit early, and when we realized no one was there yet, we decided to walk back to a nearby playground. We hung out for a bit on the swings, but right around 9.45 or so, we got bored. By this time, it was pitch black outside, and the only light in the park was the dim street lights lining the paths. Because the police were prone to busting these parties, we opted to avoid the lit path and instead walk slowly through the trees back to the party spot. All was well. It was a little bit creepy, but then we heard a noise behind us in the dark. We both whipped our heads around just to see the silhouette of a man walking his dog down the path. I distinctly remember letting go of a breath that I didn't even know I was holding when I realized yeah, it was just some old guy with a dog. We stood there for a moment, observing the man walking casually down the path, and as he walked further away from us, we noticed that the dog was still standing in the same spot. Just beyond the light of the street lamp, the silhouette of this giant 
Humongous dogs stood motionless. We began to slowly back up, still thinking that the dog belonged to this man and that maybe he was just breaking the leash laws. But as we backed away, the dog began to stalk towards us, avoiding the light of the lamp. I distinctly remember muttering, oh shit. Because at that moment, I realized that we were two not particularly athletic teenagers, alone in a park at night, with no way to get away from a possibly rabid animal. We backed away faster, and the dog picked up speed, and all at once we were sprinting towards the busy street next to the park. I could hear the crush of paws on sticks and gravel behind us. We finally reached the street and practically climbed up the street lamp that we ended our sprint under. After we caught our breath, we looked behind us, and we realized that we could no longer hear or see the dog. It had vanished. Needless to say, we didn't go to the party that night. Although that story isn't inherently paranormal, and maybe it was just a really large wolf or coyote, I really can't shake this feeling that I had that day. There was something very, very wrong and off with that dog. Unquote. Mm. I've got an idea about what it is. Hellhound? That's what I was thinking. That's what you were thinking? That's yeah. what I wrote. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, but I mean, it could just... It could just be a large dog, right? Where'd it go then? Back. I don't know. Maybe it was the old man's. You know, he was. He had his AirPods in. Yeah. He was breaking the leash laws. He was walking, listening to Believing the Bazaar. And... He's like, come on, Damien the dog. <laughs> Damien. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> <laughs> come back, the beast, 666. <laughs> <laughs> Underscore. <laughs> At the devil. <laughs> Comes back with a little child's arm. Not again. Oh, uh, yeah. Damien. Just like ghosts in Game of Thrones. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's this, I could feel the fear. I can feel the anxiety because a dog attack in itself is scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, back when I used to deliver meals on wheels, there were houses that I really dreaded going to just because I knew they had old cranky dogs. Mm -hmm. I, I've been really lucky. I've never had any reason to fear dogs, a dog, but I could see how it could be very scary. Mm -hmm. Like charging at you. You know what I mean? Don't want to get rabies, obviously. Right. I mean, I got a little nick from a, a stray dog once, and I went to the hospital. They gave you, like, what, 14 shots? They gave me 14 shots to my thigh well, at did... once. <laughs> You're like, all right, on the count of three, one, two, shabam! They had multiple nurses going, ugh, ugh. <laughs> it, was, it was insane. It hurt worse than most of my tattoos. It was crazy. But you don't want to get rabies. You don't, because, I don't know, you probably know this, but if you're experiencing symptoms of rabies... It is too late. You're going to die. Well, it depends what symptoms. I thought it was any symptoms. If you start having fevers, you still have a, like a 30 or 40% chance. Yeah. It's not too late. But if, you, if you're if you at the point where you can't drink water anymore. Hydrophobia. If, if you have that, it's too late. It's like one less than a percent of survival, which is tragic. Because yeah. normally, I hate saying it's kids. If you see a video, normally it's children that I've seen. Yeah. Not many, not many, many people I think have died from rabies, but I haven't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I don't know the stats. It's very, very sad. I know it's. It's fatal mm -hmm. if it once it gets to a certain point. So, yeah. but good thing we don't live in a uh, society where you don't want to go to the doctor because it's so expensive. Right. You can, go, <laughs> <laughs> but you can go to the ER and they'll stab you 14 times. Yeah. It's all good. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about that one in the discussion. I think there's half chance it is something paranormal, half chance it's just a really creepy experience with a dog. I don't know. All right. Let's move on to our third encounter. All right, our third story comes to us from Summer, who's actually a patron. Summer. Shout out Summer. Some, some. Summer camp. Some might say that summer is the best season. You, I don't think you some would. Some could say that. I truly like summer. Summer is one of the ones where I enjoy it when I'm in it. Sure, I welcome fall, but the minute you get to winter, it's like, all right, I'm ready. And um, with all due respect, spring. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I, I used to really like winter. But it's just take on something, so much connotation of like bad weather, scary driving, and it used to be like fun to play in the snow and like snowboard. But now it's like, ugh, people could die. I don't like the ice. And now I'm just like very anti winter. November to Christmas is cool. And after that, it can, we can literally skip spring. Like, like February could be the beginning of summer and I'd be happy with That'd that. That'd be fine. Yeah. Or just a second fall with less just mud. Just another fall. What? Some argue that the spring is. It's but muddy, though. Muddy. muddy. But the tees. Because it's so much rain. 68 degrees and then 40. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I'm just yeah. going to bring a jacket, shorts, and a sweater, and a hat. Like, everywhere. We're getting into fall now, and 
Yeah. It was a beautiful day today. It 80. was gorgeous. Yep. And it's going to probably be like 50 degrees tonight. But you don't, you don't care about our weather. So Summer, this takes place in Tennessee and Pennsylvania. Summer says that the very first episode that she heard of ours, which is how she found us, which was the Not Deer episode. Ah, cool. Which, fun fact for y'all out there, the other than the keyword, believing the bizarre, the top search phrase that people find us online for is Not Deer. That's crazy. That is apparently what we're known for online. Charlie, do you have a guess what our second one is? I'll give you a guess. Any guess. Any topic we've covered. Uh, missing 411. Baba Vanga. What? Baba, Baba Vanga? Baba Vanga. I don't think we... Why? The three things that people find us the most for online is Believe in the Bazaar, Not Deer, and Baba Vanga. Interesting. It used to be the Black Stickman theory, but that one seems to have died off. Oh, that's okay. Either way, here's a quote from Summer. Quote, So I'll start at what I believe is the beginning. About a week ago... I spent a few days in the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, the Appalachian Mountains. I was staying at an Airbnb lodge with a wooded area behind it in a very rural part of eastern Tennessee. I was alone for this trip, which is wild. That's <laughs> very, very crazy. cool. And I, I applaud the, uh, unquote, by the way, I applaud the, the solo that's, trip. That's, you know what I mean? That's, uh, My hero is Rent and Link. Brave. Rent and Link do that. I think it's cool. I would feel guilty. Yeah. Just being like, all right, by myself, bye. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'd be scared. I I would need like a weapon. I'd probably have. A well, she might have had a weapon. She, she, I'm just saying. She's got a machete. She just carries <laughs> a katana at all times. It's a wandering samurai. All right. So, quote: On my third day at the lodge, I got this overwhelming, uncomfortable feeling that I had to leave ASAP. It was like that gut feeling that if I didn't get out of there, particularly before dark, that something bad was going to happen. I also saw a weird shadow walk through the little hallway in the lodge out of my peripheral the same day after I'd already decided to pack up and get out of there. Maybe I was just being paranoid at that point. I don't really know. Anyway, I packed my things and headed home with no problems. Here's the thing. My best friend and I were on the phone talking about cryptids the night before, particularly the cryptids that you aren't supposed to say their name out loud. Mm -hmm. Y'all know the one. Mm Mm-hmm. Fast forward to last night, I'm back home in central PA, driving to work around 9.50 p.m. I noticed eye shine in the tree line on the side of the road. When my headlights lit up that part of the tree line, I saw this deer standing there. Just one that I could see, but it wasn't just doing the classic deer in headlights thing. It was actually staring directly at me. Like, I'm pretty sure I made eye contact with it. I felt like it was staring straight into my soul, almost through me. I felt those eyes the whole time I was driving past it. I feel like it was aware of me. Not aware of my car, but aware of me. It was the weirdest experience I've ever had with a deer, and I've seen a ton, especially on this same road. I could only see its head sticking out of the tree line, so I couldn't tell if the body was normal or not. The stretch of road where I saw the deer is about two miles from my job. So around 12.30, I went out on break, and I don't know if I was just spooked, but I felt watched. I felt like it was out there in those trees still, watching. But that's my little experience with a potential not deer. I'm seriously wondering if something followed me home from Appalachia or if it's just two separate odd occurrences. Mm. Let me know what you guys think. Unquote. It's interesting. Can you imagine a a deer in the road? And (laughs) it puts its head. I can, actually. It goes, hmm. (laughs) It squints its eyes. "Hmm." You you mother. (laughs) That's what I think of. You can't hit me over here. (laughs) I love it when it, an animated thing squints its eyes like that. Yeah. Like there's a chicken in. Oh my God. No. I mean, yes, but no. Was it? It was not Monsters Inc. May Inc. There was a movie I saw on a drive in with Monsters Inc. University. Oh. I can't remember what it was. Maybe the front. I don't know. It had a chicken in it squinted eyes. And it, it, I thought it was the funniest little thing. Was that Pigeon movie? No. Oh, okay. It to me, this almost feels like separate encounters. Yeah, I don't think it's the same thing. But I feel like the thing in Tennessee was much more urgent. Yeah. Imagine messaging the Airbnb host because you have to kind of talk to them. You're like, yeah. hey, loved. Did they? Leave, should she leave five stars? Like, great environment, clean, easy to talk to, haunted AF. Yeah. Like, what she say? Like, sorry, I'm leaving early. 
Gotta go. <laughs> Gotta go. I'm gut feeling. Well, you you fake spooky. a fam, fake an emergency, right? They're just like, we get it. <laughs> that would be unsettling. I feel like this happens every time. Yeah. I mean, you could promote it as a haunted Airbnb. That'd be pretty dope, actually. You could. Yeah. If you're aware of it. Uh, yeah. I, I think now maybe it's like energy because she said she was talking about cryptids with her friends mm-hmm. and she sees something in Appalachia and maybe. Yeah. Well, also, that's the thing, if you say the name on the. On the unbelievable side, it could be psyched out. Like, yeah. uh, here's here's probably my most believable scenario, which I'm giving before the discussion, but I don't care. Experienced something paranormal in Tennessee, had a cryptid conversation with her friend, and got her psyched up. So it's like paranormal experience plus talking about it, getting you creeped out. Yeah. Sees a deer. And just and gets freaked out. Strange deer somehow focuses and hates you. Now let me tell you though, I it's, she was saying exact words that I've used because when if you go back and listen to an episode yeah. 100, which is 131 episodes ago now, that's a while go, ago. If you go back and listen to episode of the Skinwalker Experience, me and my friend Ethan both talk about how it didn't feel like this thing was looking at the car. Mm-hmm. It was looking because you kind of. You. You're like all these little dumbass animals. They don't know what a car is. They don't know what drive. Like you're like, they're looking at this thing moving, but then there's like a secondary element to it of like, okay, this animal isn't just looking at this moving car, this moving vehicle. It's actually looking at the human, the person that is controlling it. And that's like a different level of intellect, a different level of understanding that we don't always place on animals. Yeah. So I think there's like that creepy feeling of like, wow, it wasn't looking at my car. It was looking at me. So I totally get where she's coming from with that. And I don't want to take away that feeling, you know, or invalidate that. I just think it's possible that she was psyched out by a really, a truly paranormal experience that happened in Tennessee. I mean, it's definitely a valid theory. But it's also the idea of speaking energy into it. And then, you know, if you put energy into it verbally, it's a chance, you know, that if you look into the void, the void looks back. I'm trying to say. Yeah, knock on wood, though. It's not like <laughs> we don't talk about that often. Yeah, well. Any other thoughts? I want to know if anything's happened since, but we're not going to get that right now. This was pretty recent, so okay. I don't think so. Probably not, but that's okay. She said there are other experiences. These, this was the experience she wanted to send in now. Sure. sure. But it's, I think for her, it's cool that she found us from the not deer, and then she potentially had a not deer experience. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the not deer stories. I think they can be so cool, but sometimes I just feel bad for the deer. Like, what if it's really just a sick deer? That's sad, too. Yeah. You know, the way she kind of set it up, where she's like, I only saw the head, I didn't see the body, it gives me that, like, creepy anglerfish, where it's like, oh, it's something pretending to be a deer, like, it only has the head of a deer that it can portray, Yeah, and the rest is just, like, you don't want to see. Somewhere behind the woods, yeah. Yeah, it's like, if I see the deer, maybe I'll approach it, but then you don't see what's behind it. That's not quite the not-deer philosophy, but it's... It's close. It's very similar. It's yes and no. I guess, to a certain degree. The not deer is almost like a living mimic from D&D. Like, it looks like something, and it turns into this monster. Yeah. I'm just thinking, like, the angler where you just see, like, oh, it's the head of a deer, and then you walk. It's just this large behemoth of this creature that just yeah. has, like, its pinky a, fingers and deer, deer head. Yeah. Uh, ugh, yeah. <laughs> so, let's move on to our fourth and final creature feature listener submission story. All right, this one is wild. This is the headliner. Yeah, I. Um, all stories are great. Yeah, I wouldn't put a story on here that I didn't like, but I did want to do longer, short, short, longer. Not that this one is. This one's not as long as our first story, but if you can believe it, if you can believe it, it's wilder. This is and Zach, if you're listening, or Zachary, if you're listening, don't take any offense to what I'm saying because. You just shouldn't. It, like, this would be a story that I th- you would think would be on, like, the no sleep. Oh, okay. It is, yeah. And like, we're approaching what I would feel like would be, if I heard it, a no sleep Reddit thread. Which, for those of you who don't know, it's people kind of flexing their creative writing mm-hmm. paranormal stories. Which is awesome. It's, it's yeah. so much fun to read. So I don't want, I, I'm just saying that up front to, well, let me say this. Let me say this. Just to set the tone, okay. So. When we, we have our form on our website for people to submit their stories. Yeah. 
And on that form, we asked, do we have the permission to tell your story? And is there anything you want us to keep private? Often people say, change last name. Like we said, Sophia, change the full name. Mm -hmm. Change my friend's names. Don't Don't say where I live. Don't mention the exact city. Exactly. This is what Zachary put in that section. Okay. Quote, I have no reason to hide my identity. These things are real and people need to know how to defend themselves from these creatures. So that is a like stamp on like, no, like I need to get this out there. People need to know how to defend themselves. That is so different than please change my last name. I don't want people to know where I'm, I'm, which I'm fine with that too, by the way. I probably, I would probably do the same if, you know. Yeah. No, but that that's just, it's a different kind of like I don't want to say energy, but like you know, there's a level of confidence and and um, I say consciousness. Yeah, just like I don't know, it's like stamping approval here, just like but bam, like well, put on wax. Without further ado, I'm really excited. All right, buckle up. So this encounter comes to us from Zachary in rural Williamson County in southern Illinois. Southern Chicago. <laughs> yeah, I so said put that on a map. Zachary is a cattle rancher and a farmer by trade, along with being a minister and Sunday school teacher. He also has relatives and ancestry that link him to the Shawnee tribe. Cool. Zachary believes that he had an encounter with a skinwalker and wants to use his submission to share his experience and tips to combat these evil creatures. He also notes, and, and this is his words here, he also notes that it's not just a Navajo tribe thing. It's not just Navajo tribes that are being impacted, that it's many tribes. And this encounter took place in March of 2022. He says that a few weeks prior to his encounter, he was actually on a different podcast, which he didn't name. I'm not, I'm not omitting it because Curious. of like jealousy. Like, no, no, no. you're listening you to know who they are. Yeah, no, like, I would say it if he said it. He just didn't say it. He said he was on a podcast and they asked him questions about like, do you believe in skinwalkers? What do you think skinwalkers are? And things like that. So it must have been paranormal, but yeah, mm-hmm. it wasn't us. <laughs> and I don't know who it was. So he answered the questions to the best of his knowledge and beliefs on what he thought it was and kind of left it at that. Now, Zachary was really familiar with skinwalker lore, and he was also aware, based on the lore, that talking about them at length was like drawing a moth to a flame. But he ignored that because even though he was really knowledgeable about it, he didn't truly know if deep down he believed it. He didn't know if these things really existed. He was educated on it, uh-huh. but it was like, is this lore or is this something to actually be fearful of? I understand that feeling. I, sometimes I feel that as well. Yeah. So this belief was directly challenged on March 7th, 2022, which also is one day after I turned 30 years old. Yeah, I, I must say. say it's very close to your birthday. Yep, I was 30 years and one day old. Here's a quote from Zachary. Quote, in the weeks leading up to the face-off, I've been noticing things were off around my ranch. Equipment wasn't running right. Gates were unlocked and left open. Cattle kept getting sick. There were strange markings around my place. And Native American flute music was coming from the woods. I contacted a few friends of mine who were Native American Shawnee, Seminole, and Cherokee descent. And they confirmed that what I was dealing with was most likely a skinwalker. One, being a medicine man, told me that the only way to rid myself of the skinwalker was to face it in hand-to-hand combat and defeat it. He also gave me a list of what I would need for the ceremony, which included a bay leaf, Uh black salt, red and black paint for my war paint, red tail hawk feathers, which is my spirit guide, tiki torches for the points of the compass, firewood, lighter fluid, representation of the elements of fire, air, earth, and water, a blessed weapon of some kind, sage bundle, tobacco, symbols of protection like a blessed crucifix, and cedar wood. Don't forget boxing gloves. Boxing gloves. Ding, ding. I stood in the woods where I would fight the skinwalker, and I yelled, Ye Nadilushi. Oh, no. Ye Nadilushi, I'm not afraid of you. I challenge you. In the ways of my ancestors, the Shawnee, Tribal combat, no tricks, no magic, just you and I. Meet me here on the night of the full moon and face me or continue to be a coward and stay from my sight. I had to go in with a torch, no flashlight or any kind of technology. I lit four torches at each point of the compass to represent north, south, east, and west. Then I had to take representatives of the four elements of earth, fire, air, and water with me to add to the perimeter of the circle. A torch for fire, 
a bowl of water for water, a deer antler for earth, and a dream catcher for air. Then I did a walk around the perimeter of the medicine circle with sage and blessed it and left it burning in my ammo box like an incense burner and took salt and made a ring of protection inside the medicine circle. Right as I finished the protection ceremony, I turned around and he was in the circle and I said, are we going to stand around all night or are we going to fight? His eyes were solid black orbs in his sockets that radiated evil and will to do harm. He was about five foot nine and 150 pounds. And then he rushed me and took me to the ground. We fought on the ground for a while until I got a hold on his arm after I broke his hold on me and I wrenched it till the shoulder came out of the socket and I heard the bones in his elbow break. I sat there and I had him pinned and I put my knife to his throat and forced him to tell me his name and he wouldn't tell me. I dug it into his neck and told him I would cut his throat if he didn't tell me his name. And finally he told me, and I rebuked him and said to never return to my land or bother me, my family, and my friends ever again. I made him swear it, and I released him. After that, he walked out of the medicine circle. He shapeshifted into a groundhog and limped off into the night. After it was all finished, it started to rain, and you could literally feel the evil leave the air. I've not had any more trouble with the skinwalker, and things return to normal after my ceremony. Unquote. Yo. That isn't that. That. That's real. I'm sure it's. Zachary. Please. I wonder. Okay. So, Zachary, I wonder if he had. Did he mention if he had previous, like, fighting training at all? I think there must have been something going on. That he didn't, you don't just know how to do that stuff. Right, you can't just, I couldn't break a grab. I know, it goes a little beyond the, everyone needs to know how to do this. But I mean, he would probably also say people should know how to fight and defend themselves. That's true. Yeah, you probably do know how to, I, sounds like John Wick a little bit. Which is not bad. Very cool. That's amazing. That's incredible. I think we finally found the use for the bay leaf. Because I see it in recipes, and I don't think it does anything. I think it does. I think, I think it's for skinwalkers. I mean, also, I think it tastes good, but, like, you know, things can have two purposes. Apparently. <laughs> apparently. Blueberries taste good in antioxidants. Bay leaves, good for soup and good for skinwalkers, yeah. apparently. It's, necessary it's good for ingredient. Chipotle rice. All right, so that is our four listener submission episodes that made up Creature Feature Volume 4. Let's talk about them in the discussion. All right, Charlie, we got four listener submissions. We have a believability scale. If you're new to listening, which would be shocked if this is the first one you found, but that's cool. Welcome. Hope you're having a good time. Hope you enjoyed those stories. Thank you, everybody, for sending in those stories. Our believability scale goes from believable to viable to skeptical to unbelievable. I'm, uh, I'm having a hard time remembering anything. Oh, I got all these written down. Okay. Sure. I'm like, uh, everything Story we one. just talked yeah, about. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, drop it. Okay. Story one was the creature, Jordan in Utah with his dog, Roger. Yeah, uh, he mm-hmm. he feels uncomfortable. Sees his hunching creature with yellow eyes, and then he hears his mom's voice, both saying "Hey" and an exact phrase from a VHS tape that he'd watched the night before. That's so scary. That one, yeah, like that's that is. I see what you mean by cinematic. It's terrifying, yeah. absolutely terrifying. That's also one of the tropes of skinwalkers is that they would s- mimic something like that as well. Hmm. Which to me, like, I feel like location doesn't matter for everything. And I'm not an expert. You know, there's people way more knowledgeable about skinwalkers than I am. But I know, like, Southwest, Arizona, stuff like that is the most common. Utah is near ish there. Mm -hmm. Chicago, which we talk about, we'll talk about soon, seems not quite there. It does, unless there's like a draw, I think. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, there's like mimic monster, Bigfoot is what it felt like at first, but then you're getting these what if voices. It's just like a bear, right? What if it's just like a mid transformation skinwalker as a bear? Oh yeah, you know, I didn't. It, it's a skinwalker that transforms into a Bigfoot. Yeah, <laughs> it's got a Bigfoot. It's pelt. too powerful. Yeah, no, I mean, there's like levels of me not going in my backyard again, like not feeling comfortable 
Yeah. Not feeling comfortable keeps me from, like, my attic is a place I would never go just to lounge. Like, I don't have any interest in, like, just chilling in my attic. Yeah. And, like, my, my basement, like, I'm never going to just chill in my basement. because well, you work out in your basement. That's what I mean. Like, I will go to my basement to do my task. It doesn't, I don't not go there. So I'm I'm trying to go through, like, levels of that. It's, like, would would not feeling comfortable, feeling like I'm being watched, stop me from going onto my deck? Probably not. Seeing that creature? Ugh. Mm. It would probably take a while before you like you'd have to like let it you'd have to forget about it. Claire's like, why are you hanging out in the front all of a sudden? Dude, you'll never catch me on my porch. I don't know why. I'm just saying that's the new place if you can't go in the backyard. I have a porch and I think I've been on it maybe twice ever. Anyway, but then this thing, the voice thing, like there's no coming back. Like I'm not shocked to see. Yeah, the only thing I'm shocked is it took him two years to leave, but I guess it's a house is a house. This isn't yeah, a horror movie. It's hard to it's also it's 2018, right before well, COVID happened. The- he left. He said he left two years in 2020, yeah. right before the pandemic. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. At the very end, the very yeah, no, he'd be trapped in his house with this thing. Wow, that's scary. You should see, you should see the Bigfoot with the mask outside. <laughs> Six <laughs> feet, Bigfoot. Stay back there. Oh, he's just, he's just in his room and he hears dinner's ready from his mom. Just like go. Well, oh, what do you do? You, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like it's like a, like he must have put it in there as a specific detail in his mind. I remember he said it was unseasonably warm. Yeah. And they had the, With the windows open. They had the windows open. So it could hear it every could hear. Thing. Like that is such a small, insignificant detail. It's a good detail. And it's just like this thing hurt. It's like. Like, it must have like, been just against the house and no one could see it. Like, like it was like underneath of, the window. What kind of luring tactic is that though? You know what I mean? It's so strange. Because you know it's not going to be like. It's almost like a trance. Like he said, like I, he knew in the moment it wasn't his mom. But he still wanted to go look. Yeah. Yeah. No, this, and he said that. I was like, what a dummy. What a dumb is, dumb. At least he was self-aware, I guess. But that's. Oh, like there's no coming back from that. Like maybe, you know, I don't know, because we've had creepy experiences, and you just kind of be like, eh, it was probably nothing. Not like that. No. And his dog wasn't even with him that time. Thank like, goodness. I know, the dog was like, yo. <laughs> this is crazy. So, Charlie, on our believability scale, where do you put Jordan's experience? Believable. I believe it, 100%. I totally believe it. Area makes sense. The situation makes sense. Being watched makes sense. And then it decides to come back and find some something it can use against him. To get him to come outside. Mm-hmm. And that's what it finds. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what else this could be. And I've already, I've already put it on wax that I do believe in skinwalkers. So I'll go believable as well. Yeah. I wish it weren't true. And I hope whoever lives there now, if someone lives there now, that is just like more chill. But that is. I hope they, I'll, yeah, I hope they uh, learn the ways of combat. The ways of combat. Yeah. Get the bay leaves, y'all. Mm-hmm. All right. Story number two was Buffalo. It was Sophia and her friend going to party, get crunk, as they do in Buffalo, catch up and jumping on tables and stuff like that. And they they are going through these this back walkway to get to the party, and they see a man walking his dog, and then they realize the man's not walking the dog. And the dog is very large, and the dog notices them, and it stalks yeah. them and chases after them, and then it disappears. Yeah. Ooh, I had an idea just now. The hell hot dog. What if it wasn't hellhound? What if it was like, what if this man walking the woods at night? What if he's a witch, Ooh. right? And this dog is it familiar? Is it familiar? Mm. This is a, a demonic entity, and the reason it left, vanished, it went off by itself for a moment, and the man called it back. Just that, hear that one whistle, like that high pitch whistle, and just I wish that was in the story, but yeah. The the old the man walking, the old man walking, is the kind of detail that kind of slips under the radar because you're like, oh yeah, obviously that's just a normal man, but yeah. this dog is what's creepy, and it's mm-hmm. like, well. If for a moment they thought they, that this man was walking this dog, there, I feel like there's two things. Either the man's in on it, or he can't see the dog. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think both are possible. Yes, I do too. Especially if one's like, if it's like a hellhound. And then it's not after the man because he's not doing anything wrong, but these kids are out trying to do some trouble. Is that the lore of hellhounds? I don't know. I think, I, from what I, I understand, can't speak yes. to it. Yeah. We've, um, never, we've, never, we've never done hellhounds, so I can't. You've never done it like it. I've done a little bit of reading on it. It seems like that they are almost like harbingers or messengers of hell. Mm. Don't get crunk. You're only 16. Well, yeah. Maybe there's a little bit of that in there. Or, I don't know. I kind of like the idea that this man seems innocent enough, but definitely had something to do with it. 
And this thing is a familiar. I was going to say, why is he walking around 930 at night? I'm like, I do that all the time. <laughs> Not in the park, though. So, no, I don't. So where do you put this on our scale? I believe it. Believe it that is paranormal? Yeah. I like the idea it's a witch. I like that idea a lot. I think good, pat, bang, back. Good job, Charlie. <laughs> Connecting dots over here. We didn't even know there were dots, but he see, I'm colorblind. I don't see the dots. <laughs> and that's a fact, so I'm going skeptical. I think there's a chance it was just a dog. That's fair. It could, but where'd it go? Where'd it Bat, go? It was in the shadows. They were so busy running. It's Batman the it's dog. It's not like they were running backwards. Like, like, they're running as hard as they can. They can't even breathe. They get under the light, they turn around, and the dog's just like, peace. <laughs> Through a smoke bomb? Or it was the guy's dog, and he got called back. Like a normal guy called his dog. I don't have that much control over my dog. Well, it might not be, you know, Mars or Apollo. Yeah, it's true. I, I'm not going unbelievable. I think there's a I, chance there's some paranormal I here. I think it makes sense. You're, you make sense. Thank you. But Pat some, on my back. Sometimes I think you just need to lean to the extraordinary. That's why I'm not going unbelievable. So our third story with Summer, she has an Airbnb in Appalachia, and she sees a shadow thing in her peripheral. She gets this feeling that she needs to leave ASAP. So she leaves, she goes home, talks about cryptids with her friend, and then driving a couple of miles from work, sees a deer head peeking out at her on the side of the road, staring at her soul. Yeah. I think what we talked about earlier to set this up makes it scarier. To me, it doesn't feel very paranormal. I mean, not to put it down or anything. It, it, it's your experience. You're talking about the second half. The whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. It's just a feeling. Like, she sees a shadow in the Airbnb. You don't think that's anything? I don't know. I, I, and she also does get the strong feeling to leave. I don't know. It. There's a lot of intuition and gut work here. Yeah, a lot of it feels um, like they wouldn't be admissible to court. Like, it's... Like, it's circumstantial. That's the, that's the kind of stuff we use on this podcast. It must be <laughs> circumstantial and held up in court. Otherwise, unbelievable. I'm just saying. I don't know. No, you're completely valid in yeah, your thoughts. To me, it's opinion. just not the most. I, I totally understand why she was upset and frightened, why sure. it could be scary for her. Sure. If she leaves Patreon, it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess what do you, what do you rate? No, I'm just kidding. Don't put that in the thought. What are you, what are you rating? I, I, give it, I give it a, this is my skeptical. Okay. I give her Tennessee experience a believable, and I give her not dear experience a harsh skeptical. Potentially unbelievable, but you never know. She only saw the head. Yeah. And I felt that feeling that she had of it's looking at me, not my car. Yeah. So for that reason, for the deer part, I'll go skeptical. For the Tennessee part, you know, shadow figures. I do like the idea of the deer is just like looking at her and the narrowest its eyes goes, mm -mm. <laughs> squinting. It's like, what are you up to? Where are you going? All right, Charlie. Rough Chuck. Woo! I wish our, I was as rough as Zachary. Our fourth story is Zachary in Illinois discovering how to fight a skinwalker, summoning a skinwalker, beating that ass. Yeah. KO, Tekken, finish him, broke his shoulder. Yeah. Found out his name, didn't tell us his name, was on a podcast, didn't tell us the podcast, but still became the victor. And gave us all the details needed to do our own skinwalker fights if necessary. I legitimately thought when you said, he said I needed to fight it hand to hand, I thought the next sentence out of your mouth was going to be. And then my other friend suggested this other way, which I went with. <laughs> that There's an element of this one that felt like cursed games. That's a hell of a cursed game. But yeah, I, I don't know what you mean. Like you have to set it up, right? There's like this. And this is speaking for myself here, not for Zachary. There's like an internal how something works that I just, like you see it in horror movies, right? Where it's like to defeat this thing, you have to do this ritual or you have to mm -hmm. do this thing. And I would just be so stressed out of my mind of not doing it to a T. Like I'm not a perfectionist by nature. Yeah. But like there are certain like. Like when, like, I'm not good at doing the play it by feel thing. You know, like how many drops you put in your eyes? Eh, you know, like one or two. Or it's like a big drop, a little drop. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's like little things like that. And that's really random. It's just what I've been doing with my life lately. But, you know, like if something isn't clear cut for yeah. me. Or like cooking, right? Cooking. Oh, a pinch of this. Yeah. You know. Steph struggle. Like I tell Steph to like cook something like while I'm gone. She's like, how much of this? How much of that? I'm like, yeah. Measure with your heart. She's like, I don't. 
like uh, that. Yeah, I agree. I'm more process oriented. I don't like that. See, when I cook, I just kind of go, meh, da, 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 da. If I'm cooking for myself, I do that. But if I cook, but then that he's like cooking for other people. Yeah. Like, Cooking for other people is like fighting a sin walker. There's there's a level of severity there that is intense, and there's I like repercussions. cooking for other people. I, I do too. People you don't, generally like my cooking too. Well, you've only ever cooked for me once, and you have now. So and you liked it, right? I don't remember what it was. I, I don't, don't think either. I ate it because there's meat in it, but that's okay. <laughs> Regardless, now this is this is showing Zach's trust in friends. Yeah. If a friend is like, "This is what you need to do," this. Yeah. And if he like if he texted it to him, and he like misspelled like black like black salt. Turn some in, you know, like, yeah, like garlic of, salt, you know, yeah. something else. And like your life depend, like the faith and trust that he put in his friends that he did this ceremony, one to not only attract it, yeah, but two to like summon it. Like it's just so, like, if it didn't work, you, then you start after going through every single step and being like, did I have enough firewood? What kind of tobacco did I need? Like, you know what I mean? Like, did I, did my symbol of protection, was it, you know, like, mm-hmm. that stuff did stresses it, me out. Did it Obviously, curve up? Did it curve down? For Zachary, it worked, apparently, but stresses me out. My sacred weapon would be a gun. Mine's a chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, weird. Mine's the police. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Well, that's the, well, that's the thing, though, like, I don't want my friends to be there. Like, you gotta watch. Yeah, like y'all are coming, right? Yeah, right. So I need my height. You man. got tickets or? in this corner. We're making jokes, but it's terrifying. The idea of this is it's so I don't want to say it's crazy cool, but it is kind of crazy cool. This is like a weird thing for me right now because I tend to. This is hard for me. I always want pe- like the way that I talk on this podcast is not how I always talk in my life. Like, we are trying to be engaging and a little performative, and, you know, we want you to enjoy listening to this. It's not like, hey, so, and then this happened, and then this, uh, you know. Yeah, because you're a very monotone person. (laughs) Yeah. But I also want to be authentic with listeners. You know what I mean? Like, we really do try our hardest to, you know, I want you guys to actually trust our opinions, and we're not just, like, placating anything, or if we believe in something, we're going to tell you. If we don't believe in something, we're going to tell you. And we've already discussed on this episode that we both believe in skinwalkers. Yeah, that's true. And we also give listener submissions the benefit of the doubt where it's like, we never really consider that someone's making something up. Right. Like if we don't, if we go unbelievable on a listener submission, normally it's like we've already done today. It's like, yeah, I think maybe you freaked yourself out and that wasn't actually a not deer. It was just Mm -hmm. a deer. Like we don't actually think people are blatantly lying or sending us fiction. This story. And it's like, I'm not saying it's not true because like I believe in skinwalkers is a lot to take in. Well, it's also really scary because the stakes are so high because I don't know if this is the first time for him, but he's putting his life on the line. This is a fight for his life. If he loses, do you think he's going to make it out? Because I don't. No, no, he's dead. Right. It's not, no, it's not about that. It is like the... That's what it is for me. I think it's just the story is so grandiose, so extraordinary. Like, I summoned a skinwalker with all these things, and then I fought him hand-to-hand. You know what I mean? Like, it is, yeah. like, there's a lot you have to take in to go, like, yes, this happened. Yes, that's true. Like, I wasn't, like, it's Were the tough. cows watching, you think? <laughs> no. I, I don't know. It's like, it, like, do you see where I'm coming from where it yeah. seems like it's the no sleep? It is hard to believe. believe. It is. And I think Zachary must understand that. That's why he put his name on it. Yeah, no, I mean, he's putting it out there. He's like, here's, I didn't say his last name, but he's like, here's my first name, here's my last name. Mm -hmm. Here's where it took place, and people need to know this. So I'm not saying, like, this isn't true. I'm just saying, as someone who hasn't remotely experienced this, like, I think at one time, one crossed my path. But this, it's so, it's theatrical. It, you know, it's, it's, it's larger than life. I hope we get to talk to him. I hope we get to do a listener interview with him. That'd be dope. So I'm just saying, like, I'd like... We've had many people comment on our podcast and say, I love that you guys don't just take things at face value. Like you are willing to be critical of the stories yeah. you discuss. And more often, it's way easier being honest with you guys to be critical of a story. When it's not a listener. It's a some... Mothman, a Jersey Devil, this yeah. random haunting in the city. There's also a certain amount of trust with the listener submission. Yeah, as well. it's like not someone who takes the time to, to tell us their story and submit it to us and trust us with their story to tell it. And it's, it's a vulnerable thing. This guy literally said, 
I have no reason to hide my identity. These things are real and people need to know how to defend themselves from these creatures. And this isn't also like a mistaken, like, I think my house is haunted. And you're like, no, it's actually just this leaky pipe that's, Mm -hmm. that's, you know, or it's this thing banging. It's the montage from The Conjuring. If this isn't real, he made it up. Yes. That's what I'm struggling with. Normally, there's no other thing around it. Either this actually happened or he made it up. There's no, the deer was just a regular deer and you were creeped out because you were talking about creep visiting mm-hmm. before. There's no gray that mean, area That means here. you're not lying. Right. You felt it. And we're being critical about it, even though I think yeah. her Airbnb experience was real. Or not real, but, you know, it, uh, it was, was paranormal, paranormal in nature. Yeah. There's no gray in this. It's either right. this dude fought a skinwalker and turned into a groundhog and left. Mm-hmm. Or he made it up. Yeah. With that being said, I'm going to go, I'm going to go viable. And I know. Viable is the gray area. Well, no. So. We can be in the gray. <laughs> I'm going to go viable because you're right. It is just so much to take in. It's so a lot to take in. But also, we gen- I, he seems so adamant that this happened. I believe him. I'm going to go viable as well. And I think you hit a good point. And for our patrons out there, we're going to try and set this up. We should try and hit up Zachary and try. And- That's one of the things we do on Patreon. We do yep. listener submission interviews. So we reach out and do about 30, 40 minute interviews. With yeah, people. we just talked to Just talked, well, Sophia. Oh, no, no, she said her name. On Patreon. Oh, we just talked to Sophia. Yep, who did the Felix story. Yes, that's right. The demonic Hugo. entity. Hugo. Sorry, Hugo, not Felix. Yeah, the demonic entity Hugo from yeah. that story about a couple months ago. So maybe we can try and get Zachary on there and, and hear this in his words I'd and in love detail. To. I'd love to. Yeah, because this that is a wild story. So that is Creature Feature Volume 4. I what a love these episodes. What a bang, man. That, I love wow. them so much. I think it's because they're so rare. It's We get the we get so many hauntings, and yeah. I get it. Like I, I, I'm not downplaying hauntings. I think they're terrifying. We had an experience. Should we talk about it on here, or should we save that for Patreon? You mean in here? In here. Um, I don't know. Let's talk about it. All right, let's talk about it. So we were doing Patreon content with producer Ben. Yeah. Well, uh, what's the movie? let's give let's give the layout of the studio. What's the movie, right? Let's give the layout of the studio. <laughs> okay. You walk so you in. walk in. <laughs> no, but I'll I'll give you this. There's okay. there's like a little hallway or like a little uh, waiting room, entrance room, entrance yeah. room, and then a little door where we're recording. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a little window. A little window. Because this is where receptions would probably be. Yeah. For real. Which was a closet, I think, when we started renting there, which yeah. is the junk room. And me and Charlie are uh, p- perpendicular to the wall, parallel to the wall and the window, and Ben sits with his back to it. Mm-hmm. And we were doing a horror movie review for... Long uh, Lights. Long Lights, which wasn't that scary. So it was not, not... We weren't, like, overly freaked out. Let me put that... Right. Way. It's not We had like, a good time during the movie. It was yeah, fun, yeah. It's not like we were scared and then something happened mm-hmm. based on that hype. And so we're recording, we're recording, we're recording, and in my peripheral, and then I turn my head... I see a little shadow, a little blackness move behind Ben. Not like directly behind Ben, Mm -hmm. but through the window behind the wall in like the little entry area. And at that same exact time that I turned my head to look, I noticed across the the table from me. I also turned my head. Charlie turned his head and looked at the same exact time. I didn't see anything. Well, no, I said, Charlie, why did you turn your head? Yeah. I said, did you see something? Yeah. I said, no, I didn't see anything. I thought I heard something coming from that direction. Yeah. And so, because it's like, I, I try in those moments, I try to avoid bias. Yeah. Like, oh, Charlie, did you just see that shadow figure? And mm-hmm. you might be like, maybe I did. You know, it's just like, what I'm trying, you know, he's trying to figure out what I saw. I'm trying to figure out what he saw. And it turns out that you didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. But I saw just this, this like, the, it was small. Like, I, it was barely above the window. Yeah. Just a little corner of a shadow move across out of the frame of the window. And I also, in that moment, where Tyler saw this thing, I heard just the clearest little giggle. You said it was a high-pitched noise at first. Yeah, I didn't want to freak out anybody. Okay. I, I didn't want to, like, lean in. It was, it was a giggle. It was a laugh. And... And also other people, well, there's another podcast that records in here and they claim to have seen something too. So yes, it seems like moving from the attic to here, it's fun. Well, if if we talk about the episode, if you talk about these things, perhaps they come. But what's not creepy is the feeling we get 
when we see new reviews and new comments <laughs> on the podcast. On Spotify? On Spotify, on Apple. If you're listening on Apple, you can leave a five-star review over the whole podcast as a whole. One collective thought. If you're listening on Spotify, you can comment on every single episode. This is episode 231. I don't know why I'm odd because you started this, but that's okay. Um, let's listen. Let's well. Let's listen. Let's hear a few comments from our last episode, which released today. Texas UFO encounters. Yeah, yeehaw. Cole said, "You guys always break up boring work days. I do home inspections and am constantly under dirty homes dealing with bugs. Thankful as I'm driving around, I always know I can enjoy the podcast, clear my mind, and learn something new. Thank you so much. I hope you're getting consistent work because I know for a while people were forgoing." Home, home inspections. inspections. Yeah. So hopefully you're doing well. But based on what you're talking about here, it seems like you are. So that's awesome. Steph says, I've loved the podcast for two years now. I grew up in Northeast Ohio and went to high school right by Helltown. And I always love your Ohio Cleveland references as I now live in North Carolina. Go Browns. Go. Uh, we all know what happened. Kiri said, great podcast. Always look forward to Tuesdays to listen to you guys at work. And if you really think about it, any roadhouse in Texas is Texas Roadhouse. That's correct. That's correct. Charlie, if people want to hear a little bit more on the podcast, where can they go? If you want to hear more from us, we've got a whole buttload of Patreon content dating all the way back to May 2021. 21. Yep. May of 21. That's insane. It's a long time. Um, We've got games. We've got other content, lots of content there dealing with regular stories, different kinds of things going on. It's just, we talked about up front. There's, there's something coming out. Bi-weekly now. Every Wednesday, every Friday. Quizzes. We watch movies. We hang out with people. Google Hangout. Talk about, we have mini encounter episodes. Actually, Charlie's doing a mini encounter episode this month. I have actually finished it today. What's the topic? Can you say? A little teaser? Um, monsters. Monsters. That'll fit cryptids. Which is very fake. That, vague. But that fits this, uh, the creature feature it very does. well. It does. I did not know you were going to do this. So Yeah. No, um, lots, lots of fun stuff over on Patreon. And now you can actually plan for it. Every Wednesday. Every Friday. And if also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please feel free to tell someone that you trust, that you love, that has the yeah. same tastes as you. Let Tell them an episode. You know, if you just tell them, go check out this podcast, and they see a 231 episodes, it's a little intimidating. I was going to say, that's a lot. So <laughs> my recommendation, not just for us, for any podcast, like if you're out there and you're like, I really want my friend to listen to so-and-so, and they like, give them an episode. Yeah. That's what you did. You mm-hmm. sent me, I won't say what podcast, you sent me a specific episode of one, and I listened to it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, hey, mm-hmm. check out this podcast. That's so different than like, hey, I think you, it's like curating. I think you would like this episode. Yeah. What episode mm-hmm. would you recommend, Charlie? Oh, man. I would check out Black Eyed Kids. Ooh. That'd be a good one. That's a good one to get into. I always say Antonio Vispos. I'm not going to say it this time. I'm going to say The Devil's Hole. Oh, that one's it's a good that's narrative, fun. crazy, many twists and turns. A brush with true crime we kind of had was Missing 411. Missing 411. Oh, yeah, that's a big topic, too. Mm-hmm. Like the, We did that right when the documentary came out, I believe. And also, like you said, one of our biggest search topics is not deer. And Baba Vanga, apparently. <laughs> when is the world going to end? But we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast that's about to go hit up Costco and buy every single bay leaf that they have just to, you know be safe and secure but we appreciate you as always i'm tyler and i'm charlie and catch us next week on believing the bizarre a podcast as bizarre as you are